the United States will not be provoked. We'll continue to do what we've done for a long time. We'll support cross-strait peace and stability and a free and open Indo-Pacific. You'll see that in the days and weeks ahead. We will stick by our allies and partners and work with and through regional organizations to enable friends in the region to make their own decisions free from coercion. We'll take further steps to demonstrate our commitment to the security of our allies in the region, including Japan. We will fly, sail, and operate wherever international law allows. We'll continue to conduct standard air and maritime transits through the Taiwan Strait, consistent with our longstanding approach to working with allies and partners to uphold freedom of navigation and overflight, which has enabled the region's prosperity for many decades. Ministers to continue to press the regime to end its brutal violence, to release those unjustly detained, to allow humanitarian access, and restore Burma's path to democracy. We also have to increase economic pressure, uh, do more to stop the flow of arms and revenue to the regime, insist on accountability for the atrocities that have been committed. And we strongly encourage the international community not to endorse the regime's plans for sham elections next year. They can be neither free nor fair under present conditions. One of the participants in the East Asia Summit and ASEAN Regional Forum meetings, Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov, visited with regime leaders in uh, Burma just a few days ago, calling them a friendly partner. That directly flies in the face of ASEAN's hard work to bring the violence to an end. The Kremlin has not only attacked Ukraine, it's also attacked the UN Charter and ASEAN's Treaty of Amity and Cooperation, which enshrines the principles of independence, sovereignty, equality, territorial integrity, and national identity for all nations. Uh, Russia is a party to that treaty. It's in the interest of all countries and people in Southeast Asia, the broader region, uh, the Kremlin, and this aggression, and its painful global consequences. Uh, we've heard many countries here in aggression, just as they did in joining 141 countries at the United Nations for a UN resolution supporting Ukraine and calling for an end to the aggression. 